Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Today we are talking to real herbalist Stephanie, who's a great friend of mine. And I'm excited for her to share about her journey with herbs. And just a reminder of the interview series on this podcast is just me speaking with normal people who work with herbs, not professionals, just to remind you that your relationship with the plants and the herbs is your birthright. It can be easy. And so we're talking to Stephanie today and I'm so excited to have you here. Yay. Thanks so much for having me. I was excited to have this time with you and I was honored you asked me to be here. So I can't wait to dive in. Yeah, my pleasure. It's been cool to watch your relationship with the herbs shift and grow. And so I'm excited to have you on and ask you some questions and just hear, you know, how things have been going for you. So just to, can you confirm for me, just for everybody listening here, that the work that you do in the world is not related to herbs in any way? Not at all. Okay, cool. So <laughs> we don't need to get into the specifics, but I just wanted to put that out there. Yeah, I'm in tech. So not at all related, but herbs has been my, uh, I feel like my soul's been calling me to it and it's the perfect opposite of what I do on a day-to-day basis. Mm, A nice balance. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Can you share with us like what got you started in herbs? Like what's, what was the, you know, how, how did that open up for you? Yeah. Well, so I will say with our relationship starting, I feel like you were definitely like the first person that I saw using herbs in a way that made me feel like I could do it too. So I always want to give you credit that I think our relationship and us getting to know each other really sort of jump-started my like, okay, I can do this too. And starting to explore. I think a few years ago, I had my own business at one point and I was feeling so much energy towards like outward. It was very like cerebral and I just had this like deep innate calling in my soul to, I keep using this, like, if you can't see me, I'm like with my hands, like I needed something tactical. I just kept feeling this like need to be in the earth, put my hands in dirt, like just this calling back to like my roots almost in a literal, non-literal way. And I think I just needed to listen to this calling to play to connect back to nature and to really just make my own stuff. Like there's something beautiful about putting on a body butter that you've created or putting on some lip gloss that like I made myself. There's just something so wholesome about that. So I think just those like that just deep calling in my soul was the thing that caused me to be like, okay, what is this? How do I explore this, whether that was gardening, plants, herbs, herbalism, like all of those things, like bringing me back to nature into like this grounding energy. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. What did you start with? Like, were there certain herbs that called to you? Were there certain, like, was it that you wanted to make something like what were, what did you do when, when it first started and you were like decided, yes, I'm going to take action on this. Yeah. I think really like first it started with just Um, I would say not even with like herbalism specifically, but just learning about plants, like having house plants and learning how to keep plants alive (laughs) and, um, actual like herbs, you know, do I want to grow like a little garden and do I have an outside flower pot or, you know, just little things like that, where it was like, just starting with life. (laughs) Like, how do I keep a plant alive? How do I put my hands in the earth? And I think it started with that. And once I was able to like keep some plants alive, I was like, cool. Like, how can I then utilize earth in this way to like make things for myself? And I think just, I saw, I think it might've been one of your herbal infusions with oil, but just the, the look of the plants in the oil, I was just like, oh, that's so beautiful. Like, I just want to see that and make that and try it. And I think sometimes, and what I say a lot of times with people who ask me about how did you get started? Or, you know, what called you to this? It's a, there's a lot of stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I think initially there's so many herbs and so many things that you can work with. And what really helped me get started was like, what do I know? Like what is familiar to me? And I've always drank, you know, chamomile tea, like you just buy the little tea bag. So I knew chamomile. 
And I was like, okay, what does this actually look like in the flower form? And so um, there's a lot of different places I think you can go to figure out like, where do I get this herb? And um, Mountain Rose Herbs, that was a good place that I started. And then I started searching for like local apothecaries and actually going in and, and talking to the herbalists who are working behind the counter and just like exploring, hey, I'm I'm interested in chamomile. What do you have? And sometimes they have local things that they've harvested. And so just being able to like smell it and look at it and starting with something that I know, that's, I think, how it, I was like, okay, this is overwhelming. So just start here. And that's what I always tell people. I'm like, start with what you know. So I started with chamomile and infusing that in an oil that I was familiar with. And that was like how it started. And then it kind of spread from there. But just the beauty of the chamomile in the oil, I was like, oh, that's so lovely. <laughs> I know. I love it too. Whenever I make herbal infused oil, I'm always like, oh, just like holding it up in the yes. sun. And it, there is like such a beauty to it. Um, awesome. I love that. That's so wise. And that I feel like is what I share too on my YouTube channel. And here is like, you know, I think people often can get overwhelmed with like, what if I poison myself or like, what if I do it wrong? And it's like, you're not going to poison yourself with chamomile. Like, you know how to use, you know, chamomile, you know, probably, you know, peppermint, probably, you know, ginger, like they're just a few herbs that we even have access to in our grocery store. So I'll just shout out to podcast episode 18. I talk about seven herbs that you can easily find in your grocery store. And those are all herbs that probably a lot of us already even have in our own home. So I love that. And I would give that same advice is like, what is an herb that you're already familiar with? And like, literally just probably dump it in some oil. <laughs> and there you go. You have like your first herbal, um, you yeah, have your first herbal project there. Um, so yeah, it can really be so easy. And like you said, starting with what you know, is just like a great way to remind yourself that you're already on this path. Like it's nothing that you even have to feel like you're starting because you're really not like we're, we all are in relationship with the plants already, even if we're not doing it super consciously. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like even like lavender, like that's so easy, you know, go and either find some in your garden or someone else's garden or at the store, like there's so many ways that you can utilize something so simple that you see in skincare products all the time. Like it doesn't have to be extremely complex too, or even making chamomile tea. Like if there's just little things that are just so accessible and so easy with herbs that you know of already, you don't have to overcomplicate it. Right. Yeah. And I'll also shout out podcast episode three, 10 easy beginner herbalist projects. And when you said lavender in my head, I just imagined clipping some lavender and literally throwing it in your bath water. I mean, that's right. a perfect example of like, you literally didn't even have to do anything except clip it out of the garden or throw it in, you know, a little tea bag and put it in the water or whatever it is. Like it can be so, so simple. And these herbs are just there for us to use. And I think not, I think I know online there, it's just so much about like, become an herbalist and like, take yes. this year long thing. And it's like, that's cool for people who want to do that. And if you want to like, prescribe or help people with complicated issues, yes, that probably would be helpful to do. But if you're just like a normal person who's at home and you're like, I feel called to connect with the earth more, be more creative, be healthier, like feel more conscious about what's going into the products I'm using, then this really can be so, so simple. So was oil your first, you think your first project? I think oil and tea. Like it was just two really easy things to kind of start with. And then, yeah, I think along those lines, it's really funny because like, I feel like as my journey with herbalism progressed, like I did eventually buy a course that really like helped me dive deeper into learning, but it's just because I have this like genuine interest to just explore more things. And it's weird because it's really cyclical for me. Like I feel like in the summer, I am maybe a little bit more hands-off with making things. And then in the winter, I'm like, Oh, I want to nest and just like educate myself more. So I think it's like, you know, I had a friend recently who I told about the course and she was like, I want to get, I want to do herbalism, but do I get the course? And I'm like, back up. Like, 
I love that you're excited, but like, just start with one thing. Like if you don't know where to start, but you just want to explore herbalism, like, just like you said, you don't need to like learn about every single plant. Like I think I tried to buy a book and learn about every single plant. And then it was overwhelming. And I was like, no, just start with the things I'm excited about creating. Start with the herbs I know and start, you know, like thinking about what am I really interested in? It was like a lot of stuff for me is like nervous system regulation. So like oat straw is so easy. And it's like one of those things that's like, um, it's, you don't have to be nervous about it because it's just oats, <laughs> oats straw, you know, it's very simple. And so it's like, and chamomile, like those are great places to start with any genuine interest that you have, just like focus it in on one thing. You don't have to make it extremely complex and learn all the things unless that's what you're excited about. Um, so that's kind of what I started with was just playing with like inf tea infusions and then moving into like immune support and using, um, elderberry. And then I was like, Ooh, what about body products? And I found a book that was like all about very basic skincare. So it's like, if you're feeling overwhelming about information, you could start with a book that just covers what you're interested in tea infusions, body creations or whatever. And now I just really love doing like lip gloss and chapstick. I would say chapstick. That's like my favorite thing to make. Like I have like a huge jar of chapstick right here. Awesome. And I used it for party favors at my wedding. And um, I like, that's, I think right now my favorite thing to make. And it's just like super simple, but again, it just doesn't have to be overly complicated and it can go in seasons. Like you don't have to be I'm this herbalist and it have mean meaning so many different things. It can just be, yeah, I make tea or I make chapstick, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. It's for me, it was, I think, um, I've always really been into making my own skincare or I've just been mm -hmm. into skincare in general and I just find it fun and nourishing to take care of my skin. So I really got into the herbal oils and then making like salves and body butter butters. And then essentially that's making chapstick too. It's like the same kind of um, you know, there may be a little variation in the recipe, depending on how you like it. But essentially, once you figure that out, it's like, you know, it just kind of snowballs. And um, I really love that too, like skincare stuff. So um, and then I love too what you said about, like picking what, what part of herbalism is exciting to you? Is it that you're excited about skincare? Or is it that you're excited about this one specific plant, like chamomile. Oh, I love chamomile. Like, you know, and even taking one plant that you're interested in and learning more about that one plant, because like, for instance, chamomile, I got into it because it was like calming and, you know, helps with sleep. And it's, then I found out it's good for the skin. And then I found out it's good for digestion. When you make it into like a more of a bitter tea, it helps with digestion. It's like these plants have so many different ways that they can help besides like the basic things that we already know too. So there's so much space to go deeper into whatever area is calling you, whether it's, that's a specific plant or making a certain thing or, you know, immune support in general or whatever it is. So just like encouraging those listening to really think about what is it about this that's exciting to you and just like follow that. Like if there's something that you don't care about, like you don't have to do that at all. Just follow what feels exciting. Exactly. Finding those like those plants that you know are the easy plants, the well-known plants that have lots of properties that you feel comfortable with, that you feel called to, and then learn about each one. I started with like five, I think. And that was like the basis of my apothecary at home was just like these five plants that I absolutely loved. I knew I could learn more about them. I could try them in different ways. I could use, like you said, chamomile for skin, or I could use it for sleep. And then I could mix it with oat straw if I wanted to. And that was nice and yummy. Or, you know, just allowing yourself to like start small, taste some stuff or try some stuff in, in you know, oil. You don't have to make a huge amount, like just experiment, see what you like, try different oils. I bought like four or five different types of oils to see what worked on my skin and just play with it and let it be fun. Yeah. So I'd love to hear from, for you, like, where are you with herbalism now? Cause it's been a couple years mm -hmm. and like, what yeah. are you exploring now that you're like a little bit deeper into your journey and yeah. Anything else about how that's evolved that you'd like to share? 
when it comes to herbs, I'm just really realizing I am a very cyclical person. Like in the winter, I like to nest and I like to really like slow down and digest things differently and dive into things. And it's just very slow. And in the summer, I'm like a lot of outward energy and I'm going and I'm doing things and it's less of this like slowing down phase. So I feel like right now for me, I'm less like, I'm not so much like in the education of herbs, I'm more so like, oh, a tea sounds nice, even though it's very hot <laughs> or like a, a cold infused iced tea is really lovely right now. Um, or making my chapstick or things like that. Um, I'm due for some face. Um, I have a facial routine I do with some of the oils that I've made. So I'm due to make one of those again, because I'm almost out, but in the winter and something I recently did is, um, I do have a desire just to like learn a little bit more about a wider variety of herbs. And that again, came later in my journey. And I have a course that's self-paced and it's in a binder and I just kind of read through it when I want to. And I'm interested in just expanding my own home apothecary and just trying new things. Um, so that's there when I want to re like refer back to it. Um, but I think what's fun really right now is there's a local apothecary that I just like, every time I go in there, I'm like, oh my God, this is just home for me. It just feels so good. <laughs> so I like to just go there and browse and find like little things. They make a lot of stuff. So sometimes I'll just buy what they have and just see if I like something or if there's like, they use a, a plant that I haven't used before. I'm like, Ooh, let me try that and see, or just even talking to the people behind the counter and learning more about like what was locally harvested and, you know, trying little bits of that, or I've been doing like little care packages for um, just, I don't know, people who are maybe needing some more support or just different things like that. Um, and I would, I would also just recommend like finding a local apothecary and just talking to people there. A lot of times they'll have classes or different things that you can learn from and get involved with your own community or trying like locally harvest herbs from your area. Um, that's something I started looking into as well. There's like a foraging class, um, that I've seen pop up a few times that I'm really interested in doing. And so that's just kind of where I'm at right now is just this like kind of leaning into when I'm excited about it. And then, you know, following that curiosity. And I think that's just like the best way to, to navigate it because then it's, it always feels good. It's not forced. <laughs> yeah. That's probably good, uh, advice for anything in life that we're interested in, right? <laughs> Never really feels good to force anything. Um, yeah, beautiful. Is there anything that has surprised you about working with the herbs? I think maybe just like how connected I feel to it. There's something about sitting down when my house is empty with some tea that I made and lighting a candle or some incense, I don't know, some set in the vibe, <laughs> <laughs> opening the windows and sitting down with a new little bag of herbs that I bought or, you know, just some goodies. Like, like I love going to the apothecary, finding something new, getting some new jars or like, I sometimes will repurpose stuff, you know, just setting things up and with my new goodies and just like, something about the energy that goes into like making your own stuff. It's like so different. And like, you don't want to waste anything. And you're like, let me squeeze every last bit of oil out of the, this infusion that I made because I need every drop of it, which is so different when like you buy a bottle of lotion or something, you're like, uh, oh, okay. I've used what I needed to, or there's maybe less of an attachment to any waste that comes with not using all of your products. Um, but just the comfort and touching the plant and like the process of it and how nourishing that feels. And just like, you feel like a little kid when you're watching your infusion every week and you're like, Ooh, I got to spin it around, you know, and then it's time to like drain the herbs and put it in your little special bottle that you've chosen. And just that whole process of making it just feels so, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting this like ex little kid excitement and this nourishment and this like deep reverence for the plants, you know, like that I've always had respect and honor, like nature and all this kind of stuff. But I think when like you really start getting involved with it, you just realize like, oh my gosh, like 
the earth is medicine. And when I'm on a hike, like how important it is to not step on the little flowers or like, you know, letting nature, like having that reverence and respect for how you interact with the earth. That has been such a deeper lesson for me in a way that I don't think I can explain. And just thinking about earth and the reciprocity in such a different way, like that's really what the deeper meaning of this connection with herbalism, like that's what it's really brought me. And I don't think I was expecting that type of like response. (laughs) Mm, I love that, honey. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I wanted to also highlight something that you shared with me that I think is so awesome is um, I believe like a year or so ago, you were making herbal lattes with oat straw and you made one for your brother who's not really somebody who you think would be into herbalism at all but he like got into making them or can you tell your story I'm sure I don't have the whole thing correct yeah so in the winter I was just obsessed with doing straw lattes which is something that you started making and I was like "Ooh, that sounds good so I started making them for myself on a regular basis like just I was obsessed with oat straw for it's like reminding me I'm like I need to go make some tea or something with that (laughs) just like does something inside of me. But I was, um, he came into the kitchen and and he's like, Oh, what are you making? And I told him what it was. And I'm like, do you want to try? And he was like, okay. So I made him one and brought it into his room. And a little bit later he came out and he goes, what is this? (laughs) This is so good. (laughs) And so every night from that on, I was like, I'm making one. Do you want one? And he was like, yes, please. And so he was like super excited about it. And then I think from that point on, he started getting interested. Like when I would have my little cabinet of my tea herbs, he's like, Ooh, can you make me some tea? And I'm like, yeah, what are you feeling? And he would tell me like kind of what he wants. And I'd put together a little concoction for him. And he just started to become more and more involved and interested in kind of what I was doing. And now I have some blends in the cabinet and I'm like, anytime you want something, you can just pull it out. And so he'll make his own. And it's just kind of cool because yeah, I just never thought he'd be interested in that. So it's just fun. Like when you start really like finding things that you love and feel nourishing, it's just so fun to share it with other people. Like even birthday gifts or, you know, baby shower or whatever, like making a little body butter and some chapstick. Like that's been my favorite thing to do for people. And I feel like they're like, you made this, like, that's so great. And you can put the love into it. And I think people can feel that. So It's like not only fun for yourself, but when you can start making gifts for other people, it's like that much more like, oh, like, I don't know, healing in a way. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's so, I love that. That's so awesome. And it just goes to show too, how like herbalism is like a human thing. It's not, you know, we're all children of the earth. And even if we don't, people who don't necessarily think that, that that they're interested or we wouldn't think they'd be interested it's like it's still just this human thing that we're all connected by even if we're not interested in it like we're all children of this earth and we all come from the earth and all our ancestors use these plants it's like it's just I don't know another way to say it it's just such a human thing that really does connect us all uh, which is another reason why I think it's such a beautiful thing and and I love what you said about like you know the creating and the when you create something or when you're working with the plants or when you're making something for yourself, there is just this presence that happens. And I think there's also something cool there that it's like tying us in with our ancestors, you know, that used to rely on these plants way more heavily than we do now. So there's something so rooted in it too, that is hard to put into words, but I think that there's just so many levels of why working with the plants is special. And, um, and I think that's just so cool to see somebody who you wouldn't think would be interested in it, like really light up over it. And I just remember when you told me that I was like, that's so awesome. It just made me so happy. So thanks for sharing. I'm like nodding my head vigorously because I'm like, (laughs) it is like, there was something for me that just like, I've been having this deep desire to feel more connected to like my lineage and my ancestors and just this thing. And for some reason plants, I mean, not for some reason it's clear, but like, I really feel that connection through using plants and it's making me want to even explore like my lineage and my heritage more. So that way, like I could figure out maybe what plants they, they used like in that part of the world, you know, and like, do I have a connection to that? It's just really cool. Like the layers that you can get into when you start exploring all this stuff. 
Awesome. Well, I feel like we're mostly complete. Just curious if there's anything else that you want to share that I didn't ask, or if there's anything that you want to say to listeners who are interested in starting any last piece of anything that you want to share. Yeah. I think I just want to reiterate again, it's, it doesn't have to be complicated and to be an herbalist, it doesn't mean you have to do hours and hours and hours of coursework and study, unless you're super interested in that, then sure, go for it. But it can be so simple. Like if you don't know where to start, maybe find a local apothecary or start with an herb that you just are familiar with, order that play with it, see what, what's exciting. And and then just go from there. Like I, you know, talked about a lot of different things, but I built on that. And, you know, I think just starting super small, starting with that general and genuine, like curiosity that you have, like, that's all you need. And it doesn't have to be super complicated and a book or, you know, like that's, that's a great place to start, um, or body butter or chapstick or tea, you know, just start somewhere, start simple, And it doesn't have to be overly complex and then just let it take you from there. Like, again, don't force anything, allow yourself to just play with it. See what's exciting to you. What makes you feel like, like lit up inside and then just go down that path. And then if it changes, go down a different path. Like it's your world. It's play with it. Like, let it be really easy and then see where it takes you. Love that so much. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your journey and helping inspire more people to just get in touch with the magic that is the herbs that is already available to them and within them. And yeah, thank you everybody for listening. And if you want to explore more with me, you can check out my YouTube channel. I'll link that in the show notes, or you can explore more on the podcast itself. I have lots of episodes early on about uh, how to, three steps to get started, beginner, easy beginner projects. Uh, also episode four, six, eight, and 11 are other interviews with real herbalists real people that play with the plants like Stephanie. So if you were inspired by this interview and you want to hear more like it, you can check out those episodes. Also check out my YouTube channel if you're listening over on the podcast. And yeah, just thanks so much for joining us. Feel free to reach out to me anytime on Instagram. If you have questions or requests for other podcasts or videos, I love to create content based on your requests and I would love to hear from you. And I'll say do it because I started using all of Aaron's tips and that's how it got me started. If anything, start with Aaron. (laughs) All right, guys. Lots of love. Thanks for listening.